Uh, thank you very much for asking this question. Number one, we need to understand that I'm not a therapist. That's number one. Number two, to answer the question with regards to mood swing, what I have seen that most of the people that I know who have gone, who are going through mood swing or who have gone through mood swing is that they are automatically taken to something which has happened in the past. Okay, for example, for example, that you want to grow and excel in your life, you are seeing a big dream and all of a sudden due to some problems or issues or challenges, though I don't want to use the word problem, due to some challenges, you were not able to achieve the dreams that you are expected to or you were expecting to. And at last, you ended up your life somewhere else, which was completely a different zone, a completely different pole from what you were planning to become in your life. Now, during your life, if you happen to find someone or see someone uh, accidentally uh, who has achieved the same goal that you were planning to achieve automatically, what happens? You go to the back memory that you want, you once upon a time had, and automatically what happens? It'll change your, it'll change your complete mood. And this is something that I have, I have noticed myself in my own life when I used to have this, when I had a dream, and when I was able to achieve the dream, however, due to some uh, challenges and reasons in my life, I had to completely change from my my dream or, or and, and I had to take an entirely different path. And whenever I see someone who has already achieved the dream which I was planning to achieve, I automatically get wild on myself. I also used to get my, wild on other people who are very close to me. And that is one of the reasons that I can see. Now, it also could be something to do with medical or health related issues. Like, uh, I don't want to bring any, any particular name over here. So it could be uh, due to something like a mental uh, illness, or it could also be something to do with physical or some sort of uh, a trauma that you have gone through in life. So in that case, I would definitely advise to see a, a therapist who can help you. I hope I answered your question. Uh, Sensei, so what are the factors by which we can measure our progress daily for mm. each day? Mm. What are the factors to consider? All right, very good. The most depressed people in the world, the most saddest people in the world are the people who do not have an objective for their life. Very simple as that. No object in their life. When I say no object in their life, they don't have any goal and they don't have any milestone. In other words, they have not designed their life. And in order to design their life, they have to design their day. If you don't design your day, you can't design your life. As simple as that. Now, if you are very good, if you are very good, if you know where you want to reach, then for sure you will write down your goal. Now, the factors that you have to look forward is, are you, where are you wasting your time? And, where, and what is that you're getting out of every single day, every day, uh, action that you're taking? For example, if I'm listening to a music, I'm, I'm not a, a key music lover. I used to do music and all once upon a time, but no more. So whenever I do music or whenever I, uh, I watch a movie, I ask myself, my, my second thought comes in. Now, I'm going to spend around about one and a half hours or three hours on this movie. Uh, should I watch the movie or is there something else that I can do whereby I can either gain something or I can help somebody else? or or xyz which would be an advantage for me either today or tomorrow in that case i'll stop my movie and i'll go on to the other thing which i am supposed to do so you define what is good for you if you are in the if you are in a particular industry for example let's say that you are in the music industry and then you're listening to music then that's fine because you are developing your profession am i right so similarly you need to ask yourself for me my time is very specious and i am very very strict when it comes to time i'm very i'm very i'm a bad guy when somebody takes my time for no reasons i don't like those things i don't like people calling me on telephone without knowing who you are i just tell them just send me a whatsapp message don't don't just call me because when you call me I'm, I'm wasting my time. So I, I get rid of all those things and I you should be having the courage to say no. What is the word? What is the word I said? Absolutely. Now you have to say no, not only to other people, you also have to have the courage to say no to you. For example, if you like if you like sugary things and you are a diabetic, you must be able to say no to your uh, your uh, your tasty food. 
Am I right? If you are, if you are fat, and if you see some sort of chicken and all those things, you must be able to say no to yourself. So people, they don't say no to themselves, and people, they they don't say no to others as well. Similarly, if there are there are friends who are coming and taking your time, you must be able to say no to them. Tell them that I am occupied every single day from this day to this. Sorry, from this time to this time. Therefore, please not uh, please not call me during that time. That means you must be able to say no. Otherwise, if you are a pleaser and if you want to please everyone, I'll tell you, you would be uh, uh, you would be the one in everybody's eyes saying that this guy he does not listen. He this guy he does not keep his words. Why? Because you have overloaded yourself. One of the biggest challenge that most of the leaders are facing today is overload. What do you mean by overload? Overload of task, overload of commitment, overload of everything. So do not overload yourself. Ask yourself very specific. What is that I want in my life? And in, in order to achieve that very specific goal, what are the three things that I have to do today? And you achieve it. For example, if you're a lazy guy, if you do not, uh, do not want to exercise yourself, you do not want to go to the gym or hit the gym or do push-ups or anything just don't say that i'm going to do push-ups just say that i'm going to do one push-ups a day one push-ups just say one push-ups and write down in your diary that i'm going to do one push-ups okay if you want to read books don't say that i'm going to read 20 pages 30 pages just say that i'm going to read one paragraph every single day make your goal in such a way which is achievable and not only that it also gives you motivation a self-motivation that yes this is something which is achievable now let's take one push-ups if you take one push-up it, it hardly takes one or two seconds which you can do you, you don't have to block your time you don't have to write it down in your diary or anything because you know one push-ups is one push-ups not more than two seconds now once you do the one push-up then you say well i can do one more one more one more and if you do 10 that's good if you do 20 that's good now come back to your diary and say that i achieved my goal plus i did a bonus of 20 additional push-ups now who is happy are you happy with that yes or no See, one thing, one thing, Nishad, you have to know that you are the one completely responsible for making yourself happy. You can't get happiness from anybody else. Money cannot bring you happy. Your family cannot bring you happy. Only being happy is to be happy yourself. You can be along with your family and you can be sad. You can be along with your, ha with your family and you can be really, really happy. You can make them happy and you can make yourself happy. So the first and the foremost thing is you decide whether you want to be happy. You decide whether you want to be satisfied. And therefore, you must be having a very clear-cut goal or achievement list for every single day. Make it, make it some, something that you can achieve. Going back to the book, book path, you don't have to read 20 books. You just say that I want to read one paragraph. After reading one paragraph, you say, well, I just took... Uh, around about two minutes to read this i got another five minutes let me do it right away and do it next thing number point number three do not write everything if for example if you want to do something and which can be done within five minutes right away before you write it down in your diary that i have to do this just do it do it and then come back you don't have to write it down. If you keep on writing, then if it can be done within five minutes, just do it right away. Finish it off. It's over. You're eating the frog and come back and then you sit and ask yourself what next to do. If you are planning your life in such a way, I'll tell you, you will enjoy your life like anything. I had very clear objective for yesterday. I got very clear objective because if there is a day that I work in my whole week is Sunday. How many of you know that? I Today is the only day I work. I, my first session, my leadership program already started at 6.45 today. There were leaders who attended my session this is the second session after this i'll be having my recording after that i'll be sending my uh, videos to all all of you i'll be i'll be all doing everything on sunday sunday is the only day i work the other days i just prepare myself keep in mind 80 percentage is preparation and 20 percentage is present a uh, presentation or action so make sure that you prepare yourself such a way that the weekend you feel so relaxed and you can just go and sleep in your bed very fulfilling and satisfied uh, sometimes during conversation uh, with friends or families, uh, there come some uh, instances uh, like uh, where the other party would be actively talking to you about a subject or topic. However, I may lose the connection with them. So, uh, do you have any suggestions or in, in that case or in that scenario, in such situations like uh, if you are less passionate about what the other party is talking, you have to leave that or as you mentioned earlier, uh, you don't like to waste the time when the like if something not interested or you're not passionate about well it's very simple 
it happens to me as well it happens to everyone in the world see it's not magic and it's normal for everyone if you are talking to me something and i mentioned about this even yesterday evening to my my son-in-laws who are here right now i told to them about an incident day for yesterday somebody was talking to me about uh, they were setting my studio and they were doing something called the ups and the voltage and all those things that gentleman is a technical guy and he was talking to me with passion because he's so much into that and i was just nodding my head and i am a big zero when it comes to uh, to electronic stuff like ups and the voltage and so forth and i was like okay really great i was just just talking to him as if i was listening to him but nothing was getting into my head however i can't say no to him at that particular moment because he was working you know because somebody's working on my project and he's doing the job and he's hands on he's working at the same time he's speaking and he's connecting with me but i'm not connecting with him and this is normal number 1 there if you are not passionate about a topic you will never get connected. Number two, you may be interested in topic, but your time does not permit you. For example, there's somebody else who is waiting for you and this person is really important and there's some sort of task or engagement that you have with that person and automatically, even if you're passionate about the topic the person is speaking, you will be disconnected. Number three, if you're physically not fit, when I say physically not fit, I'm not talking about being ill. It could be ill. Now, I'll give you a very good example. I was attending a training in uh, Mumbai for Jet Airways and I had flown all the way from London to attend that program. So I flew from London Heathrow all the way to Doha, Qatar and from Qatar I'm taking the flight and then I'm coming to Bombay to attend this training program. And the instructor in this program is amazing instructor. He's an IATA instructor. His name is Philip Ben. Philip Ben is well known in the world. One of the classic instructor and and what happened he was conducting the training program i was sleeping uh, this is a topic that i really like about it's all about hijacking an aircraft i was attending the training i'm in the third row and i'm just sleeping because physically i was not fit i woke up during during the break i just woke up i went to philip and i said philip i'm, I'm really tired my body's not able to take because of the jet lag and the time zone and so forth so i may be sleeping so please do not uh, uh, feel that i uh, feel that i'm not concentrating or focusing in it because my body is not able to take it. So in that case, I was very close and I was very open to this gentleman and he was able to I, I understand what I'm saying. So similarly, in some cases, you will not be able to connect, though you are very passionate about the program. Here, my body was not able to take me. Sometimes it could be that you want to go to the loo. You might, you, you are, let's say that you are a trainer or a facilitator, you're conducting training program. You did one hour, one hour is over. You are, you are so passionate that you're not stopping and there would be male and female who want to rush to the washroom they may be feeling for example if it is in india they may be feeling um, ashamed to say that i want to go to the loo because they just wanted to be seated and that's the reason why in european countries if you are feeling to go to the loo or the washroom you just get up and go you don't have to ask for permission why because the body is not able to take it so going back there are cases that you will not be able to connect with people because you are not passionate about the topic uh, number two the person who is talking to you is talking in such a way that is going over and above your head for for example, attending a training program or attending a lecture or a keynote speech where the person who is speaking is very much highly qualified and he speaks in his terminology. He uses jargons that he can understand, but the audience can't understand. In that case, what's going to happen? You are disconnecting with your with your with the speaker and automatically you feel asleep. Number three. You are attending a session or you are having a conversation with someone, you are really passionate about it but your body is not able to take. You are physically or mentally, you are not able to focus because it's distracting you from the conversation. In that case, you will not be able to focus. So, what can you do? You just have to cool down yourself. Look at who the party is. In some cases, you can you can just avoid that and go off. You can just ask for excuse and get up and move away from there. But make sure that you respect the other party. That's the only thing that you can do. But does it happen to everyone? It happens to everyone. It happened to me even yesterday or day before yesterday. It will happen. And then just relax and smile upon you. You will enjoy your life. Very simple. There is a solution for everything, my dear friend. There is a solution for everything in this world. The solution is don't read too much. The solution is don't read too much. Just read how much you're, you can observe, how much you can take, the intake level. Do not over, overload or, or your cup. That's what the, there's a Chinese saying. Don't fill your cup. It will overflow. So you have to stop before it overflows. Ask yourself, how much can you take in your cup? and then make notes of it. That's what I do. I just make notes. I don't remember anything, but I make notes. 
and I make sure that the more I teach about the points that I have read, automatically what's going to happen, I'm, I'm going to regain that. The retention of learning is by teaching. Let me repeat that. The retention of learning is by teaching. You gain around about 5% when you're listening to a lecture. Uh, you gain 10% by reading a book. Then comes the third one is if you listen to and if you watch something, for example, watching a video on YouTube, then it's, uh, I think, 20% or something. And then comes demonstration. Then comes discussion. And then the last one is called teaching. The more you teach, the more you learn. So Akbar, here is a thing that you can do. Rather than going for 5, 10, 15 pages every single day, you ask yourself, what is that you can take? What is your intake? Because your intake is different from my intake. You must be passionate about the subject that you're reading and you must be passionate about what is happening in each and every chapter. You may like the author, you may like the subject, you may like the book, but that doesn't mean that you're going to like each and every, every chapter of the book. So if the if you like the chapter of the book, then keep on reading. Otherwise, you just stop and skip and go to the next next chapter. And make sure that you write down whatever you are reading. Uh, sorry, yeah, whatever you're reading, make some bullet points and make use of that in your conversation. A very good technique of uh, of um, what do you call when you meet someone. I'm just moving away from your question. If you meet someone, the best thing to do is to uh, to to call the name of the person many times. Similarly, when you read some sort of book you make notes of it and start teaching about it again and again to different people. You don't have to be like an instructor teaching. You can bring those points in the conversation and every time you bring that in your conversation, automatic what's going to happen? The retention of learning happens there. You will remember those points. Now, did I by heart or memorize anything when I'm speaking to you? The answer is no because I have answered this question many, many, many times and it's very easy for me to answer your question as well. Why? Because reputation is the mother of all skills. Tony Robbins.